calling all builders. Welcome to Snowflake's five-minute demo dare, where contestants race against the clock to demo the latest and greatest Snowflake products and features. Our judges will rate the demos based on three criteria. How ambitious is the demo? Is the demo useful and replicable? And finally, how engaging and interactive was the demo? Each category is worth five points, and demos can rack up to a total of 15 points for a perfect score. And now your host, developer advocate Felipe Hoff. Pam pam pam! We are live. Hello, everyone. I'm Felipe Hoffa, developer advocate for Snowflake, and we are live with a new episode of Demo There. Today is April 1st, but this demo is completely true. We are going to see how to run Doom inside Snowpark, how to run Doom inside Snowflake. And for that, we have our brave demo presenter, Mika. Mika, are you here with us? Hi. And um, it's very nice to be on in your show. I like, oh, I like your work and your blogs that you post in uh, in video and everything else. How oh, you, Mika. I'm a big fan of what you started doing in this, this case, which is uh, you saw a post about how to run Doom on on Snowflake, and then you decided to do it yourself, and you posted a video, and now you're here. Yeah, um, I have previously. Uh, created a lot of blogs, but mm -hmm. nowadays uh, with ChatGPT, the internet is full of uh, written articles, and I've been uh, interested on in trying out a uh, video format. And mm -hmm. when I saw Daniel Palma's code running Doom, I mean running Doom, that's a uh, uh, use case for every platform to achieve. If you can run Doom, you can do basically everything. So like running Doom on a microwave. So I immediately connected the dots that this would be an ideal use case for a YouTube video. And um, I used the Daniel Palmas code for that. Who does to Daniel? And uh, I posted the YouTube video and you saw it and uh, here we are. Yes, and now you're ready to test this live. And yeah. by the way, I see a lot of light outside my window and outside your window is pretty dark where are you today i'm based in helsinki and it's 8 p.m over here so it's getting uh night so well it's finland you know it as, as a country which doesn't have sun for only for a few months <laughs> yes i've been to helsinki i love it i've been there on summer and winter but this is a reminder for everyone that we are 100% live. We're waiting for your comments. We're waiting for your questions. Uh, we want to see your support for Mika. Hi, Nikolai on YouTube. He's already saying hi. Um, yes. Uh, so what's the 20 second pitch for the demo you have today? I would say that my 20 second pitch is that I have a different kind of use case for container services. But that doesn't mean that you cannot use container services for something useful like running DPT core within container services. Mm -hmm. So let's see how deep this goes. And how much are you trying to do during these five minutes? Because we have judges and we want to know if you did everything you intended to do. Well, I'm trying to achieve everything, but I will be skipping few parts because I have pre-made few steps for that. But I'm I'm trying to achieve everything within five minutes. So when you say everything, what's the end result? You should be see, seeing Doom from 1993 on your screens after the five minutes or within the five minutes. Uh -huh. And it will be running inside the Snowflake? Within container services and okay. also playable. We are going to see how that works. And speaking of judges, I want to introduce our two judges today, uh, Al Prasdana and Jake. Thank you for uh, coming here to judge Mika. Uh, Prasanna, principal sales engineer at Snowflake. Jake, cybersecurity field CTO. Um, Prasanna, how excited are you to see this? What would you like to see from Mika today? I am very excited about this because Snowpark Container Services is all about bringing the apps to the data. 
So the more easy we can make this for the developers out there to bring their apps, whatever serious app they might be developing, if they can bring it to the data on Snowflake Data Cloud, that is all power to them. And that's what I want to learn is how easy is it for me to take any container, in this case, the game Doom, and bring it to bring it to the and run it within the data cloud. If I can learn that, that would be awesome. Cool. Let's see if we can get there. How about Jake? What are you expecting to see? You know, I'm, I'm going to echo that sentiment. What I what I really love about this is that you know running Doom on something it's, it seems to be a rite of passage for any any new compute platform. I think I, I like to tell my friends that the first the first Apple app that I've ever installed it wasn't on the iPhone. It wasn't on an iPod Touch. It was it was Doom running on a hacked classic iPod. Um, and, and by the way, Doom was also the first thing that that I ran when I got my hands on container services. Um, so, so what I'm really interested in today is is the same thing, right? I want to see that accessibility of this solution. You know, how you can take something that was seemingly complicated, something that that during its heyday was was the peak of technical complexity, um, and then in five minutes show how how Snowflake just makes that makes that easy and accessible today. Exactly. Let's make it. Let's see if everyone can make it work in five minutes. Um, before we start, we already have a question from Nikolai. Uh, Mika, what type of Snowflake account do people need to repeat this demo? Well, you need an account with this within AWS because container services are still on. Is it the uh, public preview, the correct term? But they are not available within Azure or Google Cloud yet. Uh -huh. So you have an account on AWS today, but yeah. Hopefully soon this will be available on every account. Yeah, um, I understood that this summer should be the um, uh, year of GA that all these features should come into GA within Azure, probably. Uh -huh. Fingers crossed. Um, yes, anything else people need to know before you start your demo? Well, as said, I have pre-made few steps already, but I will explain those uh, in the actual demo part that what are the steps that I have previously done to get this within five minute uh, time frame. Excellent. So are you ready to start the timer? Yeah, I, I have my own timer and I'll, uh -huh. let's get started. Let's see if you will do it in less than five minutes. Yeah. Let's have the demo god. Timer starts now. Yeah, so welcome to my demo about Snowflake container services. This is going to be a different kind of use case for Snowflake container services. And uh, it doesn't mean that you are limited for this kind of use cases. You can use container services for running like something services like DPT core. But let's start with this. This is going to be probably a little bit interesting and fun. So I have already created an account within AWS and US West. And for that reason, I have the full access to the whole account. I like I have the account admin role, and which I'm going to use to create a separate role, which is the best practice within Snowflake that you create roles for your use cases. And then I'm going to create a database, which is going to host the actual uh, image repository that I'm going to create in the uh, latter parts of this demo. Then I'm going to grant the ownerships to my role. And then I'm going to create a small warehouse, which I'm going to use just simply for executing the SQL DML statements. And then we come to the first interesting part of this whole demo, uh, because the whole demo is going to be exposed to public internet. I want to limit the access who can access my application. And for that reason, I'm creating a security integration, which allows me to use my personal Snowflake account for accessing the uh, service. And because this is created within the uh, public internet, I need to also bind the service endpoint to my role, which I'm going to create here. 
And then we come to the actual interesting part of container services. Container services have two distinct features. They have compute pools and they have the actual service. And over here, I'm creating the compute pool, which is familiar for those people who have, for example, created Azure Kubernetes service, where you define the node pool. And within that node pool, you define the maximum amount of nodes. And you also define the instance family. I could use GPUs, but that would be an overkill. But GPUs are excellent for ML or AI use cases. Uh, but for this use case, I'm using the smallest instance family, which is available, available within Snowflake. And then I'm granting the usage of that compute pool for my own role. And granting finally the access of that role to my personal account. And then I'm creating the uh, actual image repository that is going to host the actual Docker image that I'm going to push in the next step. And this is the actual part that I have previously done because pushing the uh, Docker image takes a little bit of time. So I would git clone Daniel Palma's excellent code. Then I would build that and I would working with the uh, code into the Snowflake using the uh, Snowflake provided repository URL, and I would push the actual code back to Snowflake. And after that, I would go into the actual latter part of this demo, where I would create the actual service. And that service would use the compute pool that I created on the first step. And that would contain the uh, link to the image that I have pushed already. And I would define the name and the port to be used, and I, I would define whether it is public or not. And I would also have the possibility to play around the instance amounts. But the end result would be an endpoint, which I have already here created. I have the ingress URL, which is the actual endpoint of the result. And if I copy paste that into a new service, you would be seeing something familiar. <laughs> yeah, and it's actually playable. There. And, and as you would say in the show business, that's the demo. Perfect timing. And with 10 seconds left. That's awesome. And can I ask you again, that was the URL. Anyone can play on that URL? Uh, they need the actual uh, account within Snowflake. So I skipped a step. I already authenticated myself into that service. So if I would log out, it would act, act, uh, ask the uh, user account to log on to the Snowflake service and the password for that as well. Excellent. I, I guess we can call this perfect a perfect demo. Thanks. And we have a visual to show that if it shows. And if it's not showing, that's the part of the demo that did not work on our side. But I love the say when it goes like time over. Are we getting it? We're not getting it. It's okay. Uh, There it is. Yes. So, our judges, Jake, Prasanna, what did you think? What comments do you have? What questions do you have for Mika? Uh, so, um, so the 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 demo was very ambitious. Mm -hmm. Running something, what is typically considered very complex is trying to create. The container and running it somewhere and then trying to create the the RBAC model and doing all that stuff is complex exposing the endpoint brings together a lot of things 
that I feel Snowflake makes it easy. And Mika showed that value prop that was very good for me. I want to I want to take Mika's instructions and I want to try this myself to learn how I would do this with Snowflake Container Services. So that's uh, that was my uh, key takeaway. Nice. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Jake? Yeah, I mean, I, I've always said the the best way the best way to learn is by doing, right? And so the, you know, on the on the on the other side, you know, the best way to teach, right, to explain something is to show it, is to walk through an actual real real tangible use case. And I think that's what you've done a done a very good job of, of doing exactly that, showing that accessibility of the platform, uh, not not just say a, a test page that shows up, but an actual interactive application that, that someone can use and in your case, get value play immediately. Um, you know, all the while, what I really liked was you talking, talking about what's going on behind the scenes, providing that context, what else is possible. Um, and, and I think that's just so valuable. So, so absolutely, absolutely phenomenal job. Thanks. Yes. Yes. Uh, before I let Prasanna and Jake this go to discuss the score for Mika today, remember, we are scoring our participants on usefulness, on how ambitious the demo was and how entertaining the demo was. Uh, Jake and Prasanna, do you have any questions for Mika? Uh, I got one. Um, so, so like you mentioned, right? We 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 sounds like we didn't develop this so that people could play Doom, um, although that is a great bonus. Uh, we we developed it as part of a larger effort, right, to bring applications closer to the data to allow right customers to run things like LLMs or security tooling, you know, within, mm -hmm. within a customer's security boundary. So uh, my question is then what what's what's next? You know, where would you where would you want to take this from here? Any less possibly less fun, but maybe more more useful projects you have in mind using container services. I'd say extra extra credit if it involves cybersecurity data. <laughs> well, I have already my second uh, idea about a video, video ready, but uh, if I would do a second video about container services, it would be to play around with the GPUs that are now possible to use within container ser services. Because uh, that has been a limiting factor, at least I've been discussing with my data scientists fellows that once the GPUs come, the, they want to test out whether it is possible to create a, a MLOps types of uh, data pipelines using container services. So that might be a one uh, topic that I might try out. Very cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One, Doom doesn't uh, use GPUs itself. <laughs> sorry, Prasanna. Yeah. Sorry, Philip. Now, the one question I have is, what were some of your challenges when you were embarking on this journey? Can you speak to some of the technical challenges you encountered? How did you go about it? Or how easy was it to do? Well, th that's the funny, funny part of this, that, uh, that I spoke with my colleague, who has been playing around with Kubernetes. And mm -hmm. I have also installed Kubernetes and used Kubernetes in my previous jobs. Mm -hmm. And when I started experimenting with, experimenting with the compute pools and the service, I was uh, baffled that, is it really this easy? Like my colleague said that what Snowflake has done, Snowflake has basically SQLified, or what's the term, of uh, uh, creating services and compute pools. You don't need any more to use command line tools because you can do everything by using SQL. So the honest answer was that I honestly didn't have any problems with this. Mm -hmm. And that's mind blowing on, at least on my side because uh, I have already working code which I could change by, I, would, I could run dpt or i could run commander keen just by changing the actual image yeah yes that's that's amazing to hear because any any new technology it is any new service like this it is fairly intimidating for people to approach it and uh, the way you you sold me on it i want to go try this and do this myself which i have stayed away from because i am more of a database sql guy a data engineering type guy. So this is like, hey, this this all conjures of images of what you just talked about, Kubernetes and all the complexity that mm -hmm. comes with it. And now I don't, what you told me, I don't need to know all that. It's all 
mm-hmm. up for me, <laughs> all hidden from me. So that's what I want to do. So that's 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 great to hear. Thank you for sharing that story. Yeah. Yes, I love how you are telling people to not be scared of Kubernetes anymore. We have a very easy way to define where you want to run the containers. Mm-hmm. I think um, that every all of us have some previous history of Kubernetes and how complex that can be. And I would say that this is an excellent version. You don't need to play around with all the Kubernetes uh, history that comes with that. Yeah. I will give uh, Prasanna and Jake a minute to go decide the final score that you get, Mika. And don't worry if you don't get only fives, because we here we say four is perfect. Uh, five is for something we've never seen before. Um, but I have a question from Nicole. By the way, if you're on LinkedIn and you cannot get your comments through, because LinkedIn sometimes doesn't get me your comments, uh, you can go to our live stream on YouTube, and that's where I'm getting all the comments that I'm answering right now. So Nicola is asking, can you please explain more how container services here works with the image you provided? Because, well, yes, I, I, a short answer would be that the, think container services as the uh, compute pool, which is similar as uh, you would have a VM, virtual machine, inside Snowflake, but instead of you uh, defining all the bits and pieces of that virtual machine, Snowflake does that for you. And I'm only pushing the uh, existing Docker image into that compute pool. And voila, I, get, mm-hmm. I can use any kind of uh, Docker files within container services. That's the uh, short answer for this. Yes, by the way, Praveen is applauding. Uh, Raymond says, great work, Mika. And Charlie says, awesome demo. Now, to go a little bit deeper, can we go back uh, to your screen, to the, uh, these steps that you uh, yeah. had uh, pre-baked this time when you were preparing the container? Because you mean for people these, that uh, don't know, yes. Yeah. This is the part that's like, Uh-huh. You started with Dan the Lions, GitHub, yep. Git. What, what, what's happening there? So basically, I have a, because I'm running on Windows, uh, I have mm-hmm. a, a VSL, uh, what's the uh, Linux subsystem. Uh, basically, I have a Linux. And within that Linux, I have Git and Docker installed. So basically, I'm cloning the existing uh, Git files, which contain the code, the actual Docker image. And mm-hmm. that Docker image contains the uh, uh, DOSBox image as well. So what happens over here, I'm cloning that into my Linux machine. And then I'm building that uh, within my VM and uh, defining that uh, let's use the repository URL that Snowflake provides. And I'm logging in with my own account into the container services. And then I'm pushing that image back to the container services. So if you are familiar with Docker files, this is a bread and butter for you. Yes. And can, can we go to Dandelion's Git repository to see what's happening there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we can delete. Yeah, the last one. Perfect. And please do because I cannot read anything. Yeah, let's. Go Thank you. Me. So this is the Git repository that creates that container. Yeah. Well, here's the Docker file, which, <laughs> which is the. Uh, it's this simple. Aha. Uh-huh. So it starts from the current Alpine. It switches to app, and it mm-hmm. copies two JSON files, and Doom. Yeah. Simple as that. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, and here and we that's... have a ver- version of Doom running, uh, because it's a port of Doom, uh, uh-huh. which is capable of running on DOSBox. And that enables us to run Doom on any web browser. So Daniel is expose- using that as a hack for exposing Doom into uh, web browsers. I see. So the DOS box 
it's a web browser DOS. So if yep. you can run something on a web DOS, then it just runs on your own. Yeah. Nice. Really, really simple. So mm -hmm. if you have similar kind of images or uh, something like that, you can co try those out, out with the uh, same code within Snowflake. Just copy the Git repository and try it out. Perfect. And this gets exposed in a web um, port that, and that's where you were connecting to. Like we can connect again to your Doom if you. Yeah, uh, I have it over here. Mm -hmm. I have the ingress URL here, and uh -huh. if let's try that, and it's really fast over here. But you might have seen that it reloads. DOS box at the start, JDOS. It's really fast. Yes. Uh -huh. And you can buy it for $9 Doom back here when it <laughs> ran in the US. Yeah. And there it's running again on that port that you are feel safe sharing with the world because it's protected with your uh, Snowflake account. Yeah. That was a big, important step on the demo. Yeah. That that I don't show because it takes time to log on to the, uh, well, I had to cut pieces over there and there to get it this under the five minutes. So, but this is uh, guarded by the Snowflake OAuth. So no one else, you can try and copy paste this by yourself, but you are not able to access it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, so people can test your security right now and how Snowflake protects the containers. Yeah. Uh, again, in a very easy, simplified way. Uh, so Charlie's asking, can we run this in our own account? Yes, yeah, Charlie, you can run this demo uh, just as Mika did. Mika, you saw Dan's post. You decided mm -hmm. to follow all the steps. Did yeah. you have any challenge other than having to run this on an Amazon account? Uh, nothing else. Yeah, I normally, else. because I'm based in Helsinki and I usually work with Azure, so the only step was to create a separate account into AWS, but because nowadays creating a new account using the organization <laughs> features, it's really simple. <laughs> and after this demo, I might even delete this whole account and create a new one into a separate region. Excellent. Now, now, let me bring back the judges for the final judgment. Uh, Mika, anything you want people to remember after this demo? Well, it wasn't April Fool's. It's <laughs> actually working. <laughs> it actually works. I love it. And before we let Prasanna deliver the final judgment, I want to remind people that we are open for submissions. Anyone that wants to show a live five-minute demo can send us a five-minute video showing that you have your demo. And we will be very happy to have you here and to have the best demo presenters live in Summit in a live event in, in San Francisco. And speaking of Summit, Jake, do you have anything that you would like to tell people about Summit? Yes, definitely. Just a little plug on my end. If anyone is coming or considering to coming to Snowflake Summit and wants to learn a little bit more about cybersecurity, how to work, with cybersecurity logs, you know, massive, massive amounts of logs being able to query very cost effectively, very performantly. We are having a capture the flag, our second annual capture the flag using Snowflake to do challenges all around cybersecurity. It's very accessible, no cybersecurity uh, experience is needed, but you know what? Everyone, everyone's gonna have fun. So ah, definitely that sounds like a really cool thing to do at Summit. So yes, come to San Francisco. Thank you, Jake, uh, for judging. Thank you, Prasanna, for judging today. If you want to present demos soon, it would be great to see you presenting too. Uh, Prasanna, what's the final judgment? So we, Jake and I, gave him a total score of 11.9. That's really out good. Of, out of 15. Jake and I both felt it was very ambitious and obviously Mika made it so easy with uh, by using the Snowflake or Snowpack container services and all the all the complexities hidden from you. That was very good to see. 
It is not intimidating anymore. It is so easy to use. And the other aspect was it is all covered by the Snowflake RBAC, the user access. So you have to you have to have access on all that. The um, re relevance was a little bit divergence. So Jake rated him higher. I rated him a little bit lower. Engaging, we were fairly close by. Jake gave him a very good score, and I gave him a slightly lower score. But it was very engaging. I learned a lot from it. And um, thank you for taking the time to share this with us, Mika. So 11.9 out of 15 is your uh, score. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks. That's beautiful. Uh, thank you so much. I forgot. Mika, no, Kitos. That's how you say thanks in Finnish? Yeah, kitos. you remember that correctly. <laughs> kitos. Kitos. Yeah. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, come join us on our next episode. And with that, Time to say goodbye. Want to be featured on our show? Submit a video of you successfully completing a functioning demo within five minutes. Demos must be technical, original, and showcase existing Snowflake features.